There has been an undoubtedly continuous improvement in the aviation industry, from the hot air balloon of the 18th century to the more modern aircraft of today's world. Different eras of aviation have come and gone. The era of lighter than air-powered aircraft and the transitioning into heavier than air-powered aircraft, but one thing has remained significantly evident, and that is the continuous improvement in aviation services. Most recently, the wide-body aircraft rocked the aviation industry, and its imprint is still right there in our subconscious, so much that when aircraft are mentioned, the picture we have in our head is a bulky fuselage. Well, not for long, as the narrow-body aircraft is gradually displacing that later. A narrow-body flight is also known as a single-aisle aircraft. Due to its narrow fuselage, the narrow-body flight has a single aisle that runs across the length of the flight with six seats per roll. This means that there are three seats on either side of the aisle. It has a maximum seating capacity of 295 passengers, which means it cannot convey as many passengers as that of wide-body aircraft. Often, narrow-body flights operate short-haul international flights and domestic flights. Gradually, the dominance of narrow-body flight is felt across the aviation industry, and it is fast becoming the future of aviation. There are various contributory factors to this development, one of which is air traffic growth. The International Civil Aviation Organization hinted that the number of passengers has increased in the last 20 years. The extensive growth in air transportation has prompted the aircraft industry to create a viable option for managing the growing needs of passengers while also delivering top-notch service in the competitive aviation industry. The desire to find a solution has led to the manufacturing of some new generations of outstanding aircraft. There are three planes in this category of the latest narrow-body aircraft with the latest optimized engines. The first on this list is Airbus A220, previously known as the Bombardier CS series, which has the smallest capacity of the three. The grant to travel longer range was recently approved, ETOPS approval for this model of Airbus, with the inclusion of travel from the west coast of the USA to Hawaii or from the east coast to Europe. Following closely is Boeing's 737 MAX, an upgrade of the Boeing 737. It offers the greatest range in its family due to the newly upgraded airframe and the new CFM International Leap 1B engines. The long-range version of the Boeing 737 MAX has the capacity to travel 7,400 kilometers with the passenger capacity of 150, and it will be able to travel long range as the rivaling A321 XLR. The third of the lot is the real game changer, the A321 XLR. It is the latest member of the A321neo family. It is the upgraded version of Airbus's short haul set to operate at the longest range of the A320 platform. The A321 XLR operates with inbuilt fuel tanks. The A321 XLR has the capacity to travel at a stretch of a 707 and make a return, which amounts to 4,700 nautical miles, around 10 hours, which is the equivalent of the distance from Beijing to France or Florida to the UK. This is in high contrast to when Boeing 707 started flying in 1958, with several stops landing to refuel. The largest narrow-body flight presently is Boeing 757-300 which can fly 3,990 statute miles, or 6,426 kilometers, without refueling, displacing Boeing 757-200 with 20% greater passenger capacity. In the area of range and efficiency, narrow-body aircraft are well-optimized and they have the tendency of competing side-by-side -side with wide-body flights that were previously dominating the long-haul airspace. The A321LR has a range of 7,400 kilometers, with the 737 MAX following at close range. Such distance coverage was typically associated with wide-body aircraft before now, but the emergence of optimized narrow-body flight has since given wide-body flight competition, and the A321 and 737 MAX are peculiar with this development. One brilliant feature of new-generation aircraft in which narrow-body flight also belongs is its fuel efficiency ability. International Air Transportation Association reported that each new generation of aircraft has 20% enhanced fuel efficiency. This directly translates to narrow-body flights having the capacity to travel long distances without needing to stop over to refuel. For instance, the A321 Classic delivers a 10% cost reduction in contrast to A321neo, which goes a step further to deliver a 20% cost reduction. 
This simultaneously saves the airlines money and also contributes to the welfare of passengers. Similarly, aside from that, narrow body flight requires the lowest fuel burn. It also significantly makes less noise. In an age where consumers are becoming increasingly more sensitive to the plight of their environment, the narrow body of flight is a good option to make recourse to as it makes lesser noise compared to other models of aircraft. Similarly, the low fuel consumption of narrow body aircraft will be cost effective for airlines and thereby influencing a drop in the fares of consumers. This will attract an influx of consumers in a world where the most consumers are concerned about is getting quality for less. But do we blame them? Show me a person that doesn't love the quality for less. Previously, wide-body flights accounted for long-haul routes, but the new era in passenger growth has introduced narrow-body aircraft on long-haul routes. This will ensure that the aircraft does not have stopovers like the wide-body aircraft. Topping the chart of narrow-body long-haul flights is the Panamanian flagship carrier at 4,500 kilometers. Aircraft passengers will be more than willing to opt for the option that best serves their interests. Generally, long-distance travel is often associated with the hub-to-hub -hub travel when transporting large goods and passengers through the traditional long-range wide-body aircraft. This means that the passengers will then catch another flight to their final destination. If the destination is a secondary city, which might not be economically feasible for the passenger. Well, the good news is the aviation industry is aware of the discomfort such travel plans exhibit. So, therefore, the inculcation of narrow body flights to long range routes that can not only travel across hubs, but from one secondary destination to another by simply increasing their flight frequency. With a narrow body flight, we are definitely beyond the era of unnecessary stopovers. This also avails passengers the opportunity to get to their destination without wasting time. This will subsequently increase the profitability of airlines. What are businesses without profit maximization? Also, the mechanical makeup of narrow-body flights secures a safe space for such models in the future of aviation. The new and more upgraded engines and other aerodynamic features of narrow-body flight pitch the aircraft ahead of its wide-body counterpart in performance. For example, Research has it that the Boeing 737 possesses chances of a lower cost per available seat mile CASM, as against the wide-body 787-800. Further amplifying the future of narrow-body aircraft in aviation is the final bow of the Airbus 380, the largest passenger plane in the world. The final A380 was manufactured in 2021. The services of the A380 have been transferred to narrow-body flights, which are more efficient options. In order to meet up with the looming demand for narrow-body aircraft, the aviation giants Airbus and Boeing have devised a means of tackling the skyrocketing demand. Airbus hopes to produce up to 60 A320neo series jets per month in 2019, while Boeing, on the other hand, plans to manufacture 57 737 MAX per month simultaneously. Meanwhile, the back orders are not waning. If these targets are met, it will usher in a 450% growth in narrow-body aircraft delivering aircraft between 2010 and 2024 that was what delivered from 1958 to 2009 put together. This would reach a total annual output of 1,680 narrow bodies, making up about four times the amount of 2004's 420 A320 and 737 deliveries. In like manner, Rolls-Royce Holdings PLC, alongside the Pratt & Whitney unit of United Technologies, kickstarted a joint venture in 2011 to develop engines for future narrow-body aircraft using Pratt's turbofan technology. Also, they will work in synergy with General Electric Corporation to produce more advanced and efficient engines for narrow-body aircraft. The companies envisioned a demand for the new aircraft totaling 20,000, or thereabout over the next 20 years, which in turn increases the demand for a single-aisle aircraft than that of the wide-body counterpart. The collaboration was a result of Rolls-Royce's decline of the request to upgrade the A320neo produced by Airbus. Safe to say, a narrow-body flight is the era of a new dispensation of aviation, but the demand is most likely not dwindling anytime soon. Well, I do hope that this expose on narrow-body aircraft is filled with all of you that you desire to know. Quick one, with this shared knowledge of a narrow-body flight, will you be able to tell or not if the aircraft is a narrow-body or a wide-body flight? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Don't stop on this amazing video, watch this one as you'll find it super interesting.